Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're gonna take a look at some really important muscles, their origin and insertion that are involved in scapular suspension, but also scapular movement. Now, an important point is this. The scapula and its stability and movement or motion is only important in the context of the glenohumeral joint. Meaning, scapular stability and motion is only there to provide an optimal position for the glenohumeral joint. You need to keep that in mind because in this video and a couple of future videos, I'm focusing on the scapula and some of its muscles, but in isolation. So I'm not talking about muscles that are attached to the clavicle or the humerus, which are also very important in scapula movement, okay? I'm just talking about those that have direct attachments at the scapula. So I wanna talk about those muscles that play an important role, like I said, in scapular suspension and movement that have direct attachments at the scapula. There's five muscles I wanna talk about today. You can see in my drawing here, I've got a posterior view and an anterior view. The five muscles I wanna talk about are levator scapulae, the trapezius, rhomboid minor, rhomboid major, serratus anterior, and pectoralis minor. So let's start with levata scapulae. Now you can see in the name levata elevate scapulae, the scapula, and you can see that it has an attachment point on the medial border of the scapula. So I've got Frank here, I've got the left scapula. This is the medial border of the left scapula. Obviously this is gonna be the lateral border. The superior medial border is where we're gonna have an attachment for levata scapulae. This is not its origin, this is its insertion site. The origin of, Leva of levata scapulae is actually gonna be the first four cervical vertebrae. So remember, you've got seven cervical vertebrae, then we move on to thoracic and there's 12 of those vertebrae. The first four are gonna have spinous processes, so these are the little processes that come out the side. And you're gonna find that the origin of levata scapulae is the spinous processes of the first four cervical vertebrae. So you've got C1, C2, so you've got the axis, the atlas, which is the one that holds the world above it, and axis, which provides some movement, then C3, C4, origin of levata scapulae, and then it attaches down to the medial border of the scapula. When we look at trapezius, you can see that there's a huge long attachment on the spine of the scapula for trapezius, the superior aspect of the spine of the scapula. Now, the trapezius is named because of its diamond shape. So it's a diamond shape because of it goes like this, right? So what you'll find for the trapezius is that its insertion point is the spine of the scapula, but its origin is going to be one, the external occipital protuberance. So this is a little bump at the back of the skull, external occipital protuberance. That's one side of origin. Also, C6 is another sign of origin, all the way down to T12. T12 is the last vertebrae that holds the ribs, all right? So external origin for trapezius, external occipital protuberance, C6 down to T12, and its attachment to these parts of the vertebrae are either directly or indirectly. Now what you're gonna find is because they all converge laterally onto the spine of the scapula, there's gonna be some fibers that move downwards. These are called superior or upper fibers horizontally, the medial fibers or horizontal fibers, and, inferior, and superiorly, which are going to be the lower fibers. Now this is important because in a future video, I want to talk about scapular movement, elevation, depression, protraction, retraction, lateral rotation, medial rotation. I'm going to talk about upper, middle, and lower fibers of the trapezius. All right, the next one is going to be rhomboid minor. Now rhomboid minor has a small attachment point at this, lowest, at this low portion of the medial border. Like I said, you've got the scapula and it looks like a little triangular portion here. The upper triangular portion of the medial border, I said, is levator scapulae and the lower portion is gonna be rhomboid minor. Now this again is a sign of insertion at the scapula because we want scapular movement and its origin is going to be something called the nuchal ligament. So when you drop your head down, you can actually feel that there's this ligament at the back of the neck. That's called the nuchal ligament. Nuchal ligament goes from the external occipital protuberance down to C6. Right? This is the nuchal ligament. Now, the nuchal C6, C7. The nuchal ligament, or the rhomboid minor, has its origin at the lowest portion of the nuchal ligament and also C7, T1. C7, T1. These two here. So, again, Rhomboid minor has its origin at the lowest portion of the nuchal ligament and at C7 and T1, and it inserts at the medial border of the scapula. When we look at rhomboid major, you can see it has a larger side of attachment at the lowest medial border of the scapula. 
And because we said that minor was lowest part of the nuchal ligament, C7, C7, T1, rhomboid major is going to be T2 down to T5, T3, T4, T5. So here is going to be the origin of rhomboid major. And like we know in the picture there, it, attach, it just moves laterally and attaches to the medial border of the scapula. This is important because obviously when we want to brace our shoulders and bring our shoulders back, this is predominantly going to be a rhomboid major activity. All right, let's now move across the serratus anterior. Serratus anterior has a huge site of attachment on the, again, medial border of the scapula, but on the anterior aspect of the medial border. And the reason why this is important, I'm going to use this piece of paper, is because the serratus anterior will bind to, I shouldn't say bind to, will have its attachments on the anterior medial border of the scapula and it actually goes anterior to the scapula. So in this image here, it goes underneath, but it's anterior and it goes around the rib cage. And what you're going to find is it's going to attach, when we look at around the rib cage, it's going to attach to the upper eight ribs. So the upper eight ribs, if I turn Frank around, it's going to attach to the upper eight ribs. Now, why is this important? It's important because when it contracts, it's going to slide the scapula around the rib cage. And this is important for protraction. That's why it's called the boxer's muscle. So that's the serratus anterior. So like I said, the medial border of the scapula and the upper eight ribs. Now, the last one we need to talk about is going to be the pectoralis minor. And you can see it has an attachment at the coracoid process. Now, its origin is going to be particular ribs. It's going to be ribs three to rib five. One, two, three, three, four, five. So rib three to rib five is going to be the origin for the pectoralis minor, and it's going to attach from these, it's going to converge up to the coracoid process. One, two, three, rib three to rib, rib five, and it's going to converge up to the coracoid process. All right, so these are the origins and insertions of some very important muscles when it comes to scapular suspension and movement. In a future video, I'm gonna talk about the exact movements, elevation, depression, protraction, retraction, lateral, medial rotation, and the muscles involved.